really want to bring this up. And this is when the Canadian Parliament actually honored a, an actual literal SS Nazi, literally, um, we'll explain it, but here's the, I'm sure you've seen this, but if you haven't, this is just shocking. If you have, I'm sure you want to see it again because of how shocking it is. Here's them honoring this legitimate Nazi. Watch this. We have here in the chamber today, Ukrainian Canadians, Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today, even at his age of 98. His name is Yaroslav Hunka, and uh, I was going to say he's in the gallery, but I think you beat me to that. <laughs> but I'm very proud to say that he is from North Bay and from my riding of Nipissing to Miskaming. <laughs> he's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we thank him for all his service. Thank you. Oh my gosh what in the world of all worlds do these people never take history class so he's sitting there saying oh in world war ii he fought against the russians so let's applaud him those evil russians the russians who were fighting the nazis oh and he fought in the ukrainian uh the first ukrainian division in the second world war which oh <laughs> was actually a division of the ss he was a literal nazi and not only it gets worse it was actually a volunteer division so it wasn't like he just was drafted into the military it was a volunteer uh battalion and he was in that so this is the, a photograph here's uh justin trudeau and bold and Zelensky, who was there uh, also honoring this um, literal legitimate actual Nazi who fought with the Nazis against the Russians in World War II. But who cares if he was a Nazi with Adolf Hitler, right? Because he was fighting against Russians and Russians are the worst. Pe they're worse than Adolf Hitler, I guess. They're worse than Nazis. That's what they're trying to say in this moment. Um, the caption underneath this photograph, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau recognize Yaroslav Hunka, who was in attendance and fought with the 1st Ukrainian Division in the Second World War before later immigrating to Canada in the House of Commons on Friday. Oh, okay, so the 14th Waff Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS um, was a volunteer division was a World War II military formation of Nazi Germany made up predominantly of military volunteers with a Ukrainian ethnic background from the area of Galicia, later also with some Slovaks. Uh, Slavics. And it says that, let's go, I'm gonna just, I'm just reading from some history. I just wanna tell you a little bit more about this group that he was in, some of their atrocities that he actually committed. Um, let me get to it. The list of they, they committed a bunch of uh, genocide, like a bunch of crimes, a bunch of slaughters. Let me see if I could find, uh, mainly against the Poles. So uh, what they're known for are three predominant slaughters in mostly Polish. There was one in particular. I can't find it, but I read about it, that there was three of them that they committed, three crimes, ethnic cleansing. One of them was real fully ethnic cleansing. It was a town that was made up of Polish people and Ukrainian people. And they went to the town and they actually separated the Polish people from the Ukrainian people and they shot them dead. And they did that a couple of times in other areas. And this was a volunteer, a volunteer group, a volunteer military group. And this man who's 98 years old, most of the people that were involved in this, in this military group were, are dead, but this person is 98 years old. And he's lived long enough to see the day where he's being honored by the government of Canada. Well, the polls aren't having it. Once this came out that what do you, you I mean, just listen to yourselves. It does. It's not like, oh, we didn't know. 
I mean, you sat there and said, I mean, this guy in the Canadian par Parliament actually just said he fought against the Russians in World War II. We all know how that story went. Uh, and he was fighting for Ukraine. Ukraine is a country that has not atoned or even reconciled its past of being very much aligned with Nazi Germany, Austria, uh, Ukraine. There was many countries that were aligned with Germany in that they were committing the same atrocities. Those soldiers came from those countries to fight alongside in the with the with the Nazis. And Ukraine is one of those areas, unlike Germany, Germany has done a lot to reconcile with its past. And if you go to Germany and visit, the people will bring up how sorry they are and how shameful it was, even though none of them were alive at that time. You hear it a lot in Germany. They're really, 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 um, it's been ingrained in them to feel very ashamed of this past. That has not happened in Austria. The Germans are kind of upset about that, actually. They feel like the Austrians need to do a little bit more to reconcile with their past, and it certainly hasn't happened at all in Ukraine. In fact, the opposite, quite the opposite has happened in Ukraine, where they revere these people, they hold them up as and honor them, saying, yeah, yeah, they might have been Nazis, but they gave Ukraine some more independence. So who cares about that one little glitch uh, of historical fact? Uh, just don't even think about it. That's what they're basically saying. Um, here's what Trudeau had to say about it. Obviously, it's extremely upsetting that this happened. Uh, the speaker, speaker has uh, acknowledged his mistake uh, and has apologized. Uh, but this is something that is deeply embarrassing to the Parliament of Canada and, by extension, to all Canadians. I think particularly of Jewish MPs and all members of the Jewish community across the country who are uh, celebrating Yom, or commemorating Yom Kippur today. Uh, I think it's going to be really important that all of us push back against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation, and continue our steadfast and unequivocal support for Ukraine, uh, as uh, we did last week with announcing uh, further measures to stand with Ukraine in uh, Russia's illegal war against it. What? So first he says, okay, this was really embarrassing. And then he's like, but we need to fight back against Russian propaganda, like as if this was some sort of Russian propaganda. So was it AI, uh, Russian AI, that you brought this guy into the Canadian parliament and stood for him, giving him a standing ovation, cheering him? on i i don't understand how this was russian propaganda um now poland is looking to extradite him 98 year old man uh poland is now saying give him up give him up because he killed a lot of poles again like i mentioned that particular group he was involved in did at least three massacres uh, all of them against polish people so the poles want their they want him and they want to prosecute him they want to put him through the ringer, you know, through trial and whatever, um, fair and square, I, th I think, in this particular case. So it says right here, breaking extradition sought a Waffen SS Nazi veteran who was honored by Trudeau and Freeland in, Can uh, in Canada's parliament. Sorry, it's a little small, so I'm trying to read it. Uh, the Polish minister has launched a bid to extradite Hunka, the 98-year-old Ukrainian-Canadian man who fought in a German Nazi division during World War II and last week received a standing ovation in Canada's parliament. So that is what, uh, so we'll see what happens to this 98-year-old man and the rest of his life, what his fate might be and maybe deserve it if they go and investigate and find that he is guilty of war crimes. Maybe very, And then the question would be, why was he able to hide out in Canada for so long? Uh, Anthony Blinken, of course, um, he uh, gets in on this and he tweets this out that ended up being fact-checked. But this is just how delusional everyone's gotten when it comes to Ukraine and Russia, you know, just totally rewriting history. Blinken says, 82 years ago, Nazis murdered 34,000 Jews at Babin Yar. Soviets buried this history, which today Putin's government manipulates to provide cover for Russia's abuses in Ukraine. The U.S. is committed to justice for Holocaust survivors and accountability for atrocities. So he's blaming, so he's saying 82 years ago, Nazis who were not Russians, okay? Nazis were German. Nazis murdered, and Ukrainian and Austrian. Nazis murdered 34,000 Jews, and Soviets buried this history? Why would Soviets do that? I'm pretty sure the Soviets were fighting the Nazis. 
The readers added their community notes on this one, and they fact-checked Blinken, and they said Soviet prisoners of war, POWs, were among the people who were massacred at Babin Yar. The Soviets liberated Babin Yar and Kiev in 1943. The Soviets held a trial in 1946 in Kiev for 15 German policemen involved in the Babin Yar massacres. Who made this person Secretary of State? Oh, that's right. A senile president, Joe Biden, of course. Um, seems like they've all lost their memory. And Anthony Blinken, I believe, is Jewish himself. How could he not know this history? How could he not have... How do you bring the Soviets into the Nazis killing 34,000 Jews? How do you then bring this, this Russians into it, the Soviets into it, and say, well, and they're the bad guys. So you say Nazis killed Jews, Russians, they're the bad guys. How does that even compute in a person's mind? But this is how far gone we are as a society right now. It's absolutely insane.